what's up everybody welcome back pitch side with parker today we're doing a little bit of a different video the first interview that i've ever gotten to do on this channel and i am so happy to welcome the special guest that is here with us today she is one of the most hardworking people that you'll ever meet she's a legend in asheville where she made three all-star teams with asheville city she is a former junior college player of the year and former Ghanaian women's footballer of the year and recently signed a contract with Sky Blue FC. It's Jennifer Cujo, ladies and gentlemen, welcome. And thank you for being here, Jennifer. Thank you for having me. It's my pleasure to be on your show. So I'm excited to be on this uh, platform and you know talk to you about my story and everything that has happened in my life. And hopefully it will inspire other people, especially kids and everyone around the world to chase, yeah. you know, their dreams as well. Yeah. Absolutely. It's a wonderful story. If you can't tell by my face, I'm very excited for this one as well. You know, this is a special one for me. We've, uh, we've, we've played together before. I've had the honor of gracing the same pitch as Jennifer. And she has a very incredible story working from playing in the WPSL last season with Asheville City and now signing the contract with Sky Blue. And so that's where I wanted to start with you. Um, you know, if, we, if we look back to last summer at the end of the Asheville City season, what were the steps that it took for you to get from playing there to ending up at the tryout and eventually being at the Challenge Cup with uh, Sky Blue? Um, I would say it's all, like I said, I wouldn't say that was the moment I knew I had to go to professional. I think I've had always had the goal and the dream since I was like 13. So, but it started somewhere, you know, for me to leave, uh, leave my country, come here, play college, find my way back to Asheville. And I think Asheville, I would say Asheville was the, the last step to push me to, you know, get to, you know, from there, then I was able to. So I, it will always be special for me to find end there, you know? And then, so I think I would say, um, like I've been playing semi-pro in, uh, for two teams, Asheville and then a team in uh, California. So I think I would say because um, I knew it could be a place that will be the next phase of my career if I wanted to go professional. And I think I was looking to change, you know, a lot of things, learn new system and then play with different type of people just for me to identify, you know, what I'm, if what, what I wanted, it's actually, you know, the right thing for me to do. So Asheville was actually like a great place that helped me to step into my comfort zone and being able to focus on what I wanted to do next. Yeah. So um, if I have to look into it, I actually finished school from uh, Maine, my last year of school. So then I was looking to change uh, clubs for semi-pro. And I reached, I think Asheville 2018 was the year that is, uh, they created the women's team. So I was looking through Instagram and then I think I saw Lydia online and I've known Lydia, but it wasn't, she wasn't my friend, but I've known her playing for the professional team. And she reached out and I was like, oh, we were creating out a new team in Asheville. The fans are great. And I think the fans actually made a huge impact, you know, playing in front of a big crowd felt like, you know, you playing professionals, everything you do is like 100% and trying to make sure everything feels like a professional environment. So she she convinced me and I think from there, I told her this is my plan. Um, this is what I wanted to do. This is where I wanted to go, you know, and as we're getting close to North Carolina College gives me a, a bit confidence feeling that, yeah, at least I could, I could be seen by a coach over there or I could get a chance to just train or play with them and then see what happens. So. I'm always grateful for the opportunity playing in Asheville. Yeah. Yeah, it's a pretty special place. You know, it's not a city that maybe everybody knows around the country, but it's a very uh, special soccer culture in Asheville and in North Carolina, as you said, with the courage as well. So we, we're glad to have you at Asheville City for sure. <laughs> star, <laughs> star player over there. Um, yeah. What was the process for you of getting ready for the tryouts and actually getting towards a place where you felt comfortable going to that open tryout with Sky Blue um, before, you know, what, what type of stuff were you doing? I mean, I, I used to see you out there at Memorial doing the workouts and stuff. And I, I've seen your, your YouTube channel, you know, posting the, the uh -huh. training videos and everything. 
Um, for me, the process was not easy. Um, it started, like I said, it all started from every every school that I went to. I put in the same amount of work um, because it's like it's like a step by step, you know. And I was freshman. The way I was thinking, I was playing is different from sophomore year and all that, you know. And then it just progressed. So for me, even when I was in Asheville in 2018, I I decided to go to tryout, but I didn't. I end up not going because I, even that moment, I felt like I wasn't really 100 percent, you know. 100% in it feeling like you know I, I think when you're going to this type of places you need to be make sure that you feel that 100% with you and knowing that it doesn't matter like you're a great player but you have to have that feeling to know also knowing yourself as a player like your strength and your weakness and being able to say yo no this is not the time I know saying no and feel you know is hard but I think I told myself and uh, I had mentors that I talked to them and they were like yeah there would mean if I feel like I'm not 100%, I shouldn't go. So I didn't. So for me, going into 2019 season, my goal was to be better. My goal was coming back as strong and, and making sure every little things that I need to do to improve, you know, I did all that in 2019 so that 2020, I'm so ready. So uh, during, um, during this time, uh, uh, 2019, I played after that's when I get into train, like the training begins serious because I know they have tryout in February. So I started training, creating my own training and doing everything, asking questions, you know, people that I play, like you said, like we play pickups and all that. I had Nathan, I had Patrick and like, you know, I will ask all of the boys, you know, give me some tips, like, because I play with them, they will tell me what I need to work on, things that I need to. So I think all those little details help me to know that, you know, I'm so ready because if I couldn't do all those things, I don't think I would feel like I can't compete, you know? And I was just, I felt like that was a time. Um, and I started digging and, you know, reach out to Sky Blue and see when is their open tryout. And they said it, they're gonna announce it on, you know, on the social media. So I was just looking around, waiting around. And a few weeks later, I saw it on, on social media, like, oh, they, they have a tryout date. I click it and I sign it. I sign out the same day. I sign um, and I also register for Washington Spirits, one of the pro team, just to make sure that I don't. I have more options, you know, going into two different tryouts, and both of them were great, and that's how I, it all happened. And then going to tryout, I was like, "This is the time. There's no other chance. The chance that I've been wanted, it's right here. What am I gonna do with that? You know, you get a little nervous and all that." But I was just, I wanted to put everything out there and then let the coach you see who I am and everything. And I think I did that. I was just so serious about everything. <laughs> so, and then it happened and I, now I'm here. So it's, it's a lot going to that and I can explain, I think as time goes on, but yeah, that's how it all started. And now I was able to compete and make make it to where I am right now. Yeah, I think if it's a lesson for anybody, you know, you, you have to keep working at it and you have to know when the time is right. And it seemed very like you really had a plan and, and you were able to get it, you know, step by step. So I, 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 I think that's awesome. Um, I'm curious, once you got to Sky Blue and you guys headed to the Challenge Cup, right? So I don't remember exactly what the, the timing of that would be, but I know that you guys went out to Utah for a while before the game started and it was the first sport in the country that tried out like a bubble, you know, and, and I think the NWSL did it very well, but I wanted to get your insight on what that was like as a player, because especially being new to a team, just what was it like? What was, what was the days like out there in Utah? Well, um, I know a lot of people, a lot of, especially a lot of players that they've played in this league for so long, everybody have different perspectives. They might think, you know, it's too much. They, you know, being in uh, the same place, seeing the same people, over and over doing the same thing every day. It's like being told what to do every day and all that. And I think some people, have, you know, will stress out and all that. But for me, it wasn't like that because I wanted to, It's it was more like I wanted to go out there and then do what I, you know, I wanted to do, put my name out and help this team to, you know, to win, you know, to, to create something new for people to actually see us, you know, the sky blue that, you know, we wanted to be. And so going into it, I didn't even know, like we, I was training thinking there's 2021 season. And so I was just training after tryout. I got invited to have like a week's training with the, the first team. 
because the tryouts was just everybody that from college, everybody that's trying out. So that was when I was like, oh my God, I have one week from two days to one week. That's a, a big, a big, you know, and mm-hmm. luckily I had a trainer back, back then. So he helped me a lot. I told him things I need. I think I need to work on this. I need to get me better ready. And I went and one week it was amazing. And so then Corona hit Then even Corona hit um, the coach put me to, you know, the group, group stuff. We did a lot of workout on zoom and all that throughout. So then we re- we heard about the bubble. And so a, a lot of people were excited also. They were anxious because that was when Corona was really serious. And mm-hmm. to be honest, I was scared too. But at that moment, I was thinking about the, my career that I've always wanted to build and I've always wanted. So Utah, um, Utah happened. And normally your day is like you wake up in the morning, you had your breakfast, you go to training come back you have lunch you do the COVID testing and then you just hang out with your friends a bit and then you it's like you go to meeting and then after meeting you go back to your room or you just spend with all your teammate but you can go to other you know teams you know floor or anything so it was just like the same but I think it was good it, it made us bonded on those kind of things but for me it wasn't it wasn't bad because I've been traveling since I was 14 doing the same thing. So for me, I was so happy that I could connect with all my players, learn more about them and, you know, develop friendship that it can help me on and off the field. So I wouldn't say the bubble was bad for me. I think it was a great, great way for me to, you know, show my talent and then show everybody who I am, you know, and it, it did help me. But I would say like, that was the breakthrough for me to be able to have those chances and play because I wouldn't, I wouldn't know what would happen if it's, if it wasn't a bubble, so. <laughs> How did you adjust to playing in the NWSL? And I'm curious what may have been different from other styles you've played before, other leagues you've played in before. Oh, yeah. So for where I grew up and how I played and where I play, we play totally different here. It's, it's more like the ball. And so for me, one thing going into Utah fitness was a huge thing for me. Fitness was a huge thing. So all my trainings, I've always I focused on that because I felt like even going to Utah, I felt like even though with my teammate for a few months, been training so hard, I felt like my fitness was there to catch my teammate because now I could play with my teammate, I could do anything like you know go the same level with them. But then other teams, I'm not there yet, and I did. I was just telling myself because that's how I felt inside, and so every game I was just kind of have this reminder of myself like because every team is different. They don't play the same as my team that I'll be like, it will be easy. So it was really tough. Even my first two games, I was like, gas out. I was like, oh God, like, you know, 30 minutes. I was like, like, you feel like you read, like I was ready to play, but also I knew, and I'm so grateful that my coach started to build me up because they know that I'm not, I'm different from them. No matter how good of a player you are, your fitness is always different. So and then they helped me to, you know, build my fitness all the way up. And so it was really, it was really different. The intensity was different. Physicality was different too. So um, for me, one thing is just the fitness that uh, I, I was so grateful to be able to learn from each team. Then as time goes on, I progress and I will be, I, I get to know how each team plays. So I can, I know how to tackle each team instead of getting worried about, oh my God it's going to be you know crazy yeah yeah the teams love to run I feel like it's a very um distinct American style I feel like American soccer especially and on the women's side a lot is so physical and it's so like you have to be fit and you have to run faster than the other team and a lot of pressing and stuff but what I noticed about you when you play I feel like you are so composed on the ball that is what like the first thing I noticed when I watch you for sky blue, despite all of that going around, everybody running, going crazy. You seem very calm on the field. Where where do you get that from? <laughs> oh, I, I guess I get that from Kaka. You know, when you watch Kaka, he's <laughs> not like that kind of player. Like if you actually watch him, uh, he's kind of known when he has to be really, really. And then it's like, I guess um, growing up, that's my style of play. I love to actually, look around and it's no one it's like if it's 100 per mile I need that little break like just make you know keep the ball you know I'm I just how 
that's how I kind of train myself to be able to be that type of midfielder. I can go in that fit, same pace, but also I wanted to have, be something different, like make sure that if the team needs to a little break, I can bring that down, you know, so that we can all go, you know, the same, that pace. And if you have to switch it. So, yeah, so that, I think that's what a lot of people say that to me, like the, how I'm so composed on the ball. So that's definitely my style, I think. Yeah, for those who you know don't know Jennifer as well, it doesn't take long to find out that she she loves Kaka. She's got it in all her her email address, her Twitter handle, Instagram, uh -huh. YouTube yeah. <laughs> nickname, all of that. But yes, definitely take after him as a player. I can I can definitely see it. I feel like I feel like you know when we used to play pickup in Asheville, having about twenty people on each team maybe help you in the tight spaces as well, right? <laughs> Yeah, it, it does, it does. I, I love playing a tight space. Uh, uh, and then Asheville is like, oh, sometimes you get so mad, but having <laughs> 20, 30 people on, on half field, you're like, but it's good because it makes you, you know, play quicker, faster, think, you know, different way than how try we have 10 people and then you hold the ball so long. So yeah. that's definitely helped me. So I do want to turn back the clock a little bit as well for you. And um, so you're you were born in Ghana grew up there. And I just want to ask you, like, how you started getting into soccer? Like, how far back can you remember playing? And what was that like when you grew up there? Um, I started, if I remember, I started playing when I was like three. I was just playing around my sister. Um, my sister is one of amazing players in my country. Um, she's also a midfielder. And even when she was like 10, 12 years old, she was playing, already joining a, the like one of the top teams. You know, and then, then they would bring her in like the last 10 minutes and she would just dribble everybody. It was like crazy, like a young kid. And so for me, that's when I um, I kind of have that passion through watching my sister play and, you know, having that feeling of, you know, it's just everybody's so happy and smiling and just that kind of made me, it's like, no, I want to do that. I want to be the same. Like, I want to just go out there, play and make people happy, smile and do all these things. So I started playing when I was three. And first when I was playing, it was just like, oh, fun playing with boys. There was no girls team, no girls team at all. So everything was around boys. You know, sometimes we put our lunch money on it just to play shootout. If you win, you, you take the money. It was just as kids, what we did back home, join boys, um, boys like kind of like a co-ed league that happened in Christmas. So everything was around boys. And then when I was 10, I joined my sister's team with the, the top team. So it's like all older people, but I was like, they have younger players that they will come and train and play matches with them just, you know, to help them until later, a few years back then they started having, you know, young girls too. So they had the older and the younger team and we always play uh, on the weekends. So I think that's when, so when I was 13, that's when I realized I was like, yeah, I think this is what I wanted to do, you know? So like, then it became like something that if I don't have that, then I can have any other thing. <laughs> so it's like, always felt like if I don't make this, that happen, I don't know if I'm going to be happy with something else, you know? And that's when I knew that, I wanted to be a professional player, start digging into it, knowing that if um, I want to be that player, then I would have to sacrifice a lot, you know, move from my country, go to other country, learn different, you know, a lot of things, you know, and I've always wanted to go to college too. Then I was lucky to have a chance to come here and then do both things. So that's how it all happened, started playing. <laughs> so what was the transition like when you moved to the United States? Because you mentioned in Ghana it's so much of a it's just fun it's it's just like it's what you do you know you go out and play and it's it's it's, it's how you express yourself and have fun and then moving to a college team did you find that there was a difference in the culture or in the way that soccer was played and how did you kind of adjust to that yeah I will say uh, because in Ghana I would tell you every little kid it's not just like a straight up, oh, you are just a good player, pass it. No, no, no. Everybody's just skillful. Like everyone has different. <laughs> if you see you're going to play. Everybody want to be a you, number 10. Most people, like we all, all the midfield, uh, you, if you go to Ghana, it, sometimes it's hard for coaches, even national team to pick the best midfielder because every single one is so good. You know what I mean? It's like yeah. every strikers are like as midfielders. They dribble, they can do all that. So 
for me coming here, it was a culture shock because back in my country, I wake up and just walk to my friend's house. I don't have to tell them I'm coming over. You know, they know, like, oh, someone, you know, it's like, it's good to see people around, hang out. But then when I came here, everything was different. Um, people, my sister was in another state. So uh, like another town, a few hours away, you can, I can't even get to her. Like, mm-hmm. and yeah, so, and then even, even like food wise and everything. But for me, I, like I, I, I was saying that in one of my interview, I think ever since the moment I landed in American, I was like, this is the dream I wanted. You know, so I kind of black out with whatever that comes with it. There was a lot of struggles that I, I had to go through, but I kind of pushed that away, those feelings away, and then let the soccer, you know, focus on soccer. So that's one thing that kind of pushed me so hard. So even when I'm mad, I'm sad, I go to the field and I'm just like put those anger in it to work so hard to get tired. So I, when I get home, I don't have to think about it and I just go to sleep, you know? So um, it was it was different, but I had to learn to, you know, understand the, the culture here and also other kinds of culture because as a player, you don't know where you're gonna end up, you know. So I was able to open up and then when I realized I, I went to division two, uh, division um NCAA, which is junior college, um NAIA or whatever. I didn't know NCAA. Then I got <laughs> here and I realized there's division one and all that if you want to go to professional, but then I've already committed. So I'm like, let me just, you know, just play. I know I'll get there. Just play and get there. That's what, what I, I did. Yeah, I think that's that's like one of the best parts of your story. It seemed like you just make the best out of every opportunity that you had. It doesn't matter, you know, whether it's in the WPSL or like you said, in Division Two, playing in Ghana, wherever it may be, it seemed like you you had that mentality that you can always make the best out of what you have and and somebody will notice. Yeah, yeah, for me, that was the biggest thing too. Even though I didn't tell myself that, but that was how I was feeling, like going to us, even playing the BAPSL. It was a big thing for me. I, w- I would miss going back to my country on holidays for like three months. Someone who wouldn't want to go home, but I want to stay. I, I, like I would stay, travel back to California, like, you know, get into it. And even... Because uh, when we realized that if you get into the, uh, the top eight, the professional team coaches will be there to pick players one or two. So when I heard that, I was like, yeah. So most of the time we'll make it to the, uh, the run of 16 and then I will have a game and everybody, most of our players, because they play D1, they will just choose school over that. Oh, I have to go to school for like, um, go to school before even school preseason start, like for two weeks. Right. Um, like, do you even care about us? Like, you know what I mean? We also wanted to get to the next level. We don't have that opportunity, but if they go, then we will lose a game. And then, but I didn't let all those things, you know, happen. I was thinking, you know, I got to do it until that moment comes. So that's what I did. So speaking of the many different levels that you've played at, one thing we haven't touched on yet is playing for Ghana. You got to play at the Youth World Cups for Ghana. And I know you scored a goal back in 2014 as well. Um, oh. Talk about the experience of, you know, putting that shirt on and, and just what that was like for you. And what is the women's football team like in Ghana? Well, so that's still, there's a lot of change that needs to happen. Um, um, me, some, a lot of few players have been talking about it, but it's still, you know, it takes a while for them to actually, I guess, to see or, like I would say, uh, youth soccer over there is not good. Um, it's like younger people playing with you know, older people. So even if you're young and you're that good, it's hard to get, you know, get break into it. And sometimes being young and playing with older people, then the, you get to, because it's like your maturity level and your strength, it doesn't match up. No matter how great you are, it's like it push you to get to a limit that then when you get to that age, you can't even develop because it's like you already kind of reached that. Mm-hmm. Back in my country, there's like, there's the legs, it's like there's one leg and the old president was, I don't know, but now they have a new president, which he seems to be, you know, care about a woman's soccer, but there's still more that they have to do step up. And so I'm hoping that they can make a lot of changes, have a, a lot of youth soccer program, treat the teams like professional, get more sponsorship and all that. But I think national team is the biggest thing. Everybody, every kid back there thinks about national team because that's where 
they kind of have every, you know, dreams, everything that they have. So for me, playing national team, I was playing national team with my sister. She's amazing. The first ever U17 World Cup in New Zealand. We both made it to the team, but, you know, um, and we, we travel uh, for qualification, but at the World Cup, they, they cut me. So I was crying for a while. <laughs> And I was young, I was like 14 and it was great experience, but I wanted to be at the World Cup. So the next World Cup, I was like, I have to make it. So I did what I have to do, I make it. And my first World Cup was great experience <laughs> at the stadium and watching, um, like looking at the stands and it's like over a thousand people watching me. I was like, oh my God, you know, it, uh, it, felt, it felt great, but also you know, it's like, okay, universe, okay, this is not all of it, you know what I mean? But it was so great. Always more. Me. And then from there, I kept pushing, went to under 20 twice, Japan and and Canada. And I think I can say I've I've grown from all those experience. And it it's it has been a great experience in my in my life, you know. I will always say my national team has given me opportunity. But then I also find my path, but then I wouldn't, you know trade anything for that, whatever that happened. And so then after that, my senior national team, they called me, but I was in school. So I told them um, until I'm done with school before I can, because every time they're playing, it's in between school and I wouldn't want to risk that. So I would definitely say, yeah, national team has been great, but there's a lot that has to change for women in Ghana. And they have to, even if it's not equal pay, but they have to start somewhere, you know, treating them, you know, giving them the same, you know, treatment like the boys. Yeah. Do you think that there is still a chance you could um, get in with the senior team in the future? Oh, senior. Oh, definitely. Definitely. There is. Uh, I know um, uh, I would definitely go back and play, but I'm hoping that, um, you know, but then everything will be different and all that. And hopefully they see what we play as, you know, we want and we want because we not just want to play be there and play national team. We want to, you know, represent a country, go to, you know, Afri Africa, win Africa, come to, you know, the world and show the world because there's so much talent. If you if you go to Ghana, African countries, the talent is there, but it's just the 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 uh, equipment that we need to to develop and all that. That's what we don't have, and that's what costs us so much. And when we get to certain stage, and we we lack of a lot of certain things. But I believe that. Um, we're definitely going to come up and then be one of the best one day. Definitely. Well, yeah, now, I mean, now you get to play, you know, the NWSL, uh, one of the most kind of forward leagues and, and progressive leagues and trying to, you know, showcase the women's game and everything. What do you see as, as your future there? And, and what, what are your goals with, with Sky Blue? Well, um, <laughs> I know uh, I have a big, you know, I think as a player, every every time you kind of have a plan, you know, you want to reach this goal and then you keep going. First, my my plan, my goal was to make it to this league and also be an example to especially kids in my country because there was no one from my country that played college and being able to make that. But then after that, I had set another goal, which is being able to be one of the best, you know, in this league and one of the best midfielders in this league and then in the future. So for me now, my target is being able to develop and improve every single day and, you know, going out and just make an impact. That's what uh, my goal is, being one of the best in the, in the future. So I, I know it's going to happen, but it's just going to take time. It's not, it doesn't just come, you know, just a day. And now I'm, I'm here with Sky Blue. I'm not thinking about anything. Uh, I, and they've, They've been a massive, you know, I'm always going to keep them in my heart because they, they're the reason that I'm here and I'm with them and I love every minute that I'm here, you know, it, it's challenging, you know, your teammates, everybody is amazing, everybody is good on the field and off the field. So being able to be in that environment makes you to be a better player and a better person as well. So I'm, I'm enjoying every moment here. So I wouldn't, I wouldn't lie about that. So it's just looking forward to grow and, and, and just be one of the best. That's it. So you mentioned being a role model. I, I do want to get your perspective on that because, as you said, only um, Ghanaian player to come and, and play in college, make it to the NWSO. I did. I looked up. There's only two African players in the NWSO, and obviously, a league, um, you know, for as as progressive as it is, definitely dominated um, by white people. So, what is the experience for you, and what do you think you can show to young girls, whether it be 
African girls or black girls in the United States as a role model? Um, I think especially for the kid, you know, um, it will be, uh, it, I would be happy if they don't think about, you know, they don't focus on that aspect like, uh, it's all white, that means if I go, I'm not gonna get in now. I want them to be able to look at us and be like, if we're able to do it, it's gonna come hard, you know, it's gonna be different from other people. But if we're able to do it, then so they can do it. Whatever we did, they have to, you know, uh, uh, reach out and, 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 you know, questions about what you have to do, you know, as a black kid and all that. I know that the, uh, a lot of things that comes with being a black and all that, it's really, it's, 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 it's not okay but I think we have to know how to handle that, those kind of situation, you know, make sure, making sure that you don't let those things, you know, affect you. It, it does affect you on and off the field, but it's depend on how you're going to handle that, you know, knowing that you're playing this game, but what you do on the field can help make that change happen, you know what I mean? So I would want them to believe in themselves, make sure that you do reach out and if you need any help, you know, so that's what I, I will ask the kids to do, for sure. Definitely. And um, something that was really important during the Challenge Cup and has really been a headline the whole year in the United States has been, you know, racial prejudice and racial injustice that happens in the United States. And I was curious what your perspective was, because we've seen a lot of statements from different teams and everything that's happening with Utah Royals FC as well. But what have some of those conversations been like for you within sky blue like what are the what are those talks like with the team if you talk about that? um i would say nwsl is doing amazing the the league and then the players association and even all the club teams you know they are doing amazing you know helping speak up and making a change happen but i will all, i will give a big shout out to my team our staff and especially our gm she's been a massive support and you know, our teammates is amazing. More, like, I would say 99% of my teammates are, are amazed. They are on board. They all know, you know, they, we have all this kind of conversation and then they see what is, you know, what is happening and whatever we say, they know that's exactly what is happening. Everybody is trying to do their best to make that change come. You know, sometimes conversations are hard. It's like you make the same conversation and it's over, but it's, it hasn't been, you know, super, hard or whatever it, here because every player here is trying to make that change happen and which is great you know because you sometimes you might be one or two people in a team which is hard to have that conversation because it's two against like 20 other players you know but then in my team it's like we have everybody trying to make that change happen so I'm really happy that I, I don't feel that neglect or feel like I'm alone in this this fight but I know that change will happen but like people are saying it's all start from you know from home and all that I think I feel like sometimes parents are also the reason why some kids you know because they don't know what happened you know it would be good for parents to teach their kids different culture different you know things that is happening sort of being able to ignore it because it's not affecting you you know you you don't have to ignore it you know it's, it's good to teach your kid that even though it's not us but you know other people it's not good to do that to other people you know what I mean but I hopefully that they're gonna make that change happen because it's it's really not now this country you can see it's really like it's like it, it's sinking you know it's going down with a lot of killing and a lot of treating you know especially like people of colors and all that and it's it's just sad but I believe that that change will happen so definitely I think these are these are great words thank you Jennifer mm -hmm. um, so I, I have one more question I want to ask because this is um, kind of one of the I guess like mottos, if you will, of my channel is I want to flip soccer coverage on its head, do things a little bit differently. So from your perspective, what is something that, or what is a way that you would like to see women's soccer specifically covered differently, like by the media? Oh, by the media. Um, well, I would say first community have to invest in them, you know, uh, even if it's not getting a coverage, like having a lot of people showing up to games, you know what I mean? Just have that fear. Like, just don't judge because of what other people have said, you know, or you've seen on TV. Just witness. And if you're on the field, you can have that connection, that feeling of, oh, now watching women, you know, it, it would it would definitely change you. You, I would want people to actually, you know, 
investing in, in all those soccer teams. You know what I mean? The lot you can do, it will help because not every team has money. You know, a lot of teams, you know, it's owned by one person and then it's, it, it comes with a lot, you know, even especially here, it's like, it's like pay to play, which I find it really like hard that if I'm playing for a team, why would I have to pay? You know what I mean? As a youth club, like you playing for a team to get a name, but it feels like you have to pay for someone to, you know, make you a better player because in my country we don't we didn't pay to play we 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 play to make the team better make the team win all because when we win our award it doesn't go to the player it goes to the team you know what i mean Definitely. so i just want them to help and also even if you're not on the field try to watch it because now they're streaming everything i think um, it's good that if, if every woman's team will get you know we get co coverage they, from other countries or also they can be able to have something that people can watch it from different country and all that. And also just the youth program in other country has to be, get better because I know American youth program is higher, but not other country. A lot of countries lack uh, you know, uh, equipment and all that to create a good environment for people to, you know, to, to develop their talent. So if they can do all that, it would definitely help a lot. Definitely. Well, the growth is happening and you've certainly been a part of it. NWSL has been smashing records and we've been watching Jennifer on the TV. So thank you again, Jennifer, for, for coming on. And I appreciate you so much for the interview. Asheville is very proud of you. You know, Asheville Zone, we will always claim you. So <laughs> um, yeah, thank you so much. Thank you so much for having me. Yeah. Thank right. you. Goodbye.